Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting vampire <laughs> and I'm going to be sipping on some black tea and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you could certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. For my paint today, I'm using acrylic paint. My colors are titanium white, Mars black, fire red, deep yellow, and burnt umber, which I will call brown. And of course, you can switch those up as well. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'll be used for, using for some drawing later, and then I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush, I have a number 10 round synthetic brush, and I have a number one round synthetic brush, and I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process, and of course you can switch those up as well if you'd like to. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you through your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the same type of paint and brushes and chalk and all the good stuff. So that's there for you. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be doing the base coat for the entire canvas. We're gonna be using our large brush and the colors that I'm gonna be using are brown, red, yellow, and white. And what I'm in essence gonna be doing is making my base tone for the skin color. So because the, the, the majority of this canvas is gonna be the face, <laughs> I'm going to be picking my mid-tone of the face and just coloring my whole canvas that color, and then we'll add all of our details on top of it. So this makes for a really quick way to just get your get the majority of that color on the canvas that you want um, without having to work around certain objects because the next things that we're going to be doing is putting black on top of it. So we're just going to paint the whole thing this color. So I have magically pre-mixed myself a skin tone. The tone that I'm going to be going for is a very pale type of color to kind of represent a, a vampire type of character <laughs> that we're going for. And for me, it was pretty easy to come up with the color because I could just, you know, use my own skin tone to, to use as a reference. So I have a very pale kind of skin tone. As you can see, it's very similar to my own skin tone. So how I got to this was I utilized my white and then I added a touch of yellow, red, and brown into it. And if I was to pick, you know, quantities of each, it's a dab of red, so not much red, just a real tiny dab of it, because the red can really go far. Um, a little bit more of the yellow, and then even more of the brown. So in quantity, little bit, medium, and more on the brown. And then I just start mixing it together. So as I'm mixing it, I can say, oh, that's too light, or oh, that's too dark. So this to me, the quantity of white was a little bit too much. So I'm gonna add more of my darkening colors, which would be the brown, a touch of yellow, and a teeny tiny touch of red. And then I would just keep adjusting it until I find that it is in the tonal value and the color that I'm looking for. That's still a little too light, so I'm gonna add a little bit more brown, tiny touch of my red and a little bit of my yellow. And I keep adding these colors a real tiny bit at a time because they can change it really, really fast. So just a little bit at a time helps me to 
um, adjust it. I feel like I need a little bit more red in there to turn it a little bit more pinky. So I just added a tiny bit more red and that's looking pretty darn similar to my color that I have over here. So I'm just going to blend them all together. And then once you've got your tone that you want, and I do um, want to forewarn you that typically a skin tone such as this will get a little bit darker as it dries. So when you're preparing your color, you can either in your you know head think about, oh, this might get a little bit darker as it dries, or you can even test it out. So you can put a little bit on your canvas and then let it dry for a minute, see if it's in the value that you want, or if you want to add more you know, pink or more yellow to it, you can really get this to be whatever skin tone that you want. Again, I was just kind of going for a lighter skin tone for the whole Dracula kind of thing. <laughs> it, it needs to feed itself to get on the more, you know, red or pinkier side. So you can certainly make yours into whatever color you want. And you can see I'm not doing any special brush stroke. I'm just going for a nice solid coat for my background. And then you can even paint the edges or the sides of your canvas if you wanted to. A, a lot of times when I'm doing these kind of paintings, I do like to give it a nice professional look and in order to do that I would wrap this color around the edge or along the outside edges of my canvas. And then what I'm going to do is I will, um, when I get this canvas fully painted, I may um, wait for it to dry and see if there's any spots that I might want to do a second coat on just because I know that I'm looking for a nice solid um, color for this background but you might be okay with it if there's um, some light spots or dark spots but I think I'm gonna aim for a nice solid coat so once I've got this done I may let it dry for a minute and see if I need to do a second coat and you can certainly do the same and I also when I want a nice solid coat I will go back and forth with my brush like this just to make sure that I work out any really thick spots um, and so that way I don't have much brush marks and then we will be using our piece of chalk for the next step so once you've got your background all nice and painted in you can put your large brush away take out your piece of chalk and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the next step is we're gonna be drawing an outline of our face. We'll be using our chalk. I do wanna forewarn you that before you start this step though, that you make sure that your canvas is dry. It'll be much easier to dry with to draw with chalk if your canvas is dry. So this is that time where you get to take that extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry, or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer and get it dry that way. So we are going to be doing um, the outline of the sections within the face. We'll outline the jaw, the mouth, part of the nose, the eyes, and all that good stuff. But I'm going to guide you into um, a basic outline. So we're not worried about any fine-tuned details or anything like that at, at this point. We're just looking to kind of give ourselves some sections that we can we can work from. So I'm going to start with the thing that's kind of in the middle of the face and we can work our way off of that. So that's going to be the nose. So if you find your um, halfway point from left to right and top to bottom, so somewhere in the center of your canvas, I'm about two inches below that is where the bottom of my nose is gonna go. So that's gonna be just the, the bottom edge of it. And I'm gonna have my, the nostrils are gonna be about a third of the width of my canvas. So you can kind of do something like this and that'll give you about the width of it. I'm gonna come up from my marker where I just did and come out to about that third third, third, and I'm about there. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'm gonna connect these with a mark that goes down like this. I'm gonna scoop it over, and then I'm gonna meet it down in through here, and then the, do the same thing on the other side. And everybody that I know has a different shaped nose from one person to the other. So if yours doesn't look exactly like mine, it's all right. We can, we can modify it, bend it, twist it, shape it into whatever style nose that you want. And then I'm going to do my mouth. So my mouth is going to occupy, if I come down from my nose about, I would say about an inch, make myself a little bit of a marker. I'm going to come down from that all 
I would say almost an inch from the bottom of my canvas, somewhere in through here. It's going to be really a take up a large area of the canvas. It's going to be slightly open. The width of it is going to be wider than my nose. So if I come out, I would say maybe about an inch or two past my nose on either side and come down to, I would say, almost about halfway between here and here, maybe a little bit lower than that. That's going to give me the corners of my mouth. And then I'm just going to start connecting the dots. So I'm going to connect this one to here to here. This will give me my bottom lip. So I'm going to take this and come across like this. And again, you can have yours as full or slender as you want. I'm going to have mine pretty on the pretty full size. I'm going to connect these two to each other to give me the opening in the middle of the mouth. So this is going to give me the top of my bottom lip. And then I'm going to come in from here just a little bit to give me the bottom of my top lip. So this is going to come up somewhere in this vicinity and then come back down somewhere in this vicinity. So I'm a little bit shy of those corners and then I'm going to connect my corners to here and here. I'm going to give myself a little bit of a dip at the top of the lip. So I'm going to take this and just go up just a little bit and then just round it to meet that, um, that other side over there. And same thing over here. Just go up just a tiny bit. Nothing dramatic. The more subtle something like that can be the more natural it'll end up. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself a jaw so or the sides of the face in through here. So I would say I'm about maybe about the height of my, my upper lip is where I'm having the face kind of emerge from the side over in through here. And then on the bottom of my canvas, I'm coming down, I would say right about where the corner of my lip is. So somewhere about here. And then I'm just going to connect these two with a little bit of a curved line, nothing major. And then I'll do the same thing over on the right hand side. So somewhere in this vicinity and then somewhere in this vicinity and then just connect them with a slightly arcing line in through there. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to give myself a couple of eyes. So typically if you go up from the corner of your nose, the corner of your eye is pretty darn close to that. So if I go up from the corner of my nose, maybe a little bit to the right, that's where I'm going to put the inside corner of my eye. Oh, and I am a down, I would say about a quarter of the way down my canvas. So maybe about four to five inches down my canvas. And then I'll do the same thing over on this side, maybe come out just a little bit to the left. And then I'm going to have these eyes kind of like cat eyes. So they're going to be nice kind of pointy almond type shapes. So if I go over to the right, about an inch shy of my edge of my canvas and up maybe about an inch and a half, that's going to give me the corner of this one. And then I'm just going to kind of connect them in this type of shape in through there. And then I'm going to section off a big portion of the eye is going to be really dark. So I'm going to section off the pupil and the colored part of the eye. So something like that. I'll do the same thing for here. So I'm going to come all the way to the left shy about an inch and come up maybe, maybe about an inch or so somewhere in through here and then connect these two in through here. And the eyes can be similar in shape. I know that my eyes are a little asymmetrical. So if your two eyes are not exactly the same, don't worry about it. It's that will again, make it a little bit more natural. And then I'm going to go ahead and connect these in through here. And then I'm going to give myself these big black or sections where I'm going to put the big black um, areas around the eye. So I'm going to come down on my top right hand side, I would say about an inch somewhere in through there. I'm going to come in towards the center of my canvas from the corner of my eye, maybe about an inch and a half. And then down on the bottom or on the right hand side, I would say I'm below my eye, maybe about an inch and a half somewhere in through here. And then I will connect those with this kind of ovally type of shape that we're going to section off for the, the black area around the eye. And then I'll do something similar over here. So I'm about an inch below the top of my canvas. I'm about maybe an inch and a half in through here and then maybe about an inch or two 
or inch and a half down from this side. And again, they don't have to be exactly the same one side to the next, so don't feel the pressure of making them exactly the same. And then make any adjustments that you feel are necessary. And then we are going to be utilizing our medium brush for the next step. So you can put your chalk away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be doing the base coat for our black areas and our red areas. So those are gonna include the inside of my mouth, my lips, these two sections over here, this center part of my eye, and then this big part back here. So I'm gonna start with my, um, I think I'll do my black sections first. So I'm gonna put black paint, oh, well, I'm using my medium brush too. I put black paint on my brush. There is gonna be no special brush stroke involved here, um, but when I do, like in, in the mouth here, I'm gonna kind of bring this black into those little corners of the mouth so that way I've got a little bit of depth going um, into the corners of the mouth. Yours, again, doesn't have to be exactly as mine. As we fill in our details, as we're going through the process, you, you certainly will have ample opportunity to make any little adjustments to these basic sections that we're kind of coloring in right now. So if yours aren't perfect or if you have little streakiness to them or you know anything of that nature, I wouldn't worry about it because you're gonna be doing all of the details on top of it later. And I'm bringing it right to my chalk mark, but if I miss some of my chalk mark along the way, I'm okay with that. I'm just gonna color this section in with some black paint. When I get to my chalk mark on these two sections, I'm gonna give it what I refer to as a soft edge. So instead of it being really, really clean, I'm gonna just let my brush kind of gently bump into that line and have a non-clean line, just a nice soft line, because we're gonna actually be creating the side of the face is kind of gonna kind of just disappear into this darkness. So you don't need a, a super clean line when it comes to that point in through here. And then same thing on this side. So you can even just kind of let yourself run out of paint as you're getting towards that line and just let your brush almost get rid of the, the chalk mark and leave yourself a, with a soft edge touching the face in through there. So then on the eye, eye parts, I'm going to be coloring in this entire center section with black paint. It's going to merge into the big black area above. So when you see this, um, see me go outside of my lines like that, it's okay. So I'm just bringing it right to my chalk marker, something like that. And then I'll do the same thing over in here because I want to do something different along the edges of this black section. The um, the big section or that's gonna hit the forehead. So just kind of getting this section in with my black and through here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna color the majority of this in just with um, a solid color or a solid coat of black paint. But when I go to do the edges, especially up at the top, I'm gonna be doing almost like a feathery type of brush stroke. And down at the bottom, I'm gonna be giving it a soft edge like I did down at the bottom of the, um, of the jaw. So I'm gonna just kind of go nice and close up to the eyes. And this, this line, I suppose, could be clean if you want to. And again, you can certainly leave some of that that chalk mark showing, we'll be um, getting rid of it when we go to do the, um, the details. As I get towards the edge here, I'm gonna let myself kind of run out of paint and just give myself a soft edge as it's meeting the face. And again, if this shape changes on you, don't worry about that. That's gonna make it uniquely yours. So it does not have to be exactly as mine. I'm just kind of letting my dirty brush without reloading to give myself these soft edges. And then when I get up to this area in through here, I'm gonna be pulling it up like this and giving it these wispy um, type of feathery uh, brush strokes. I will be doing another layer up here later, inter intermingling the skin color with it. So again, if yours is not perfect at this point, don't worry about it. This is just the start 
of the beautiful um, little details that we're going to be putting up on this um, cool face that we're making. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to the other one, making these kind of come off in a little bit different directions to give myself a sense of variety in through there. So kind of clean edges when it's meeting the eye, which again is not a necessary thing, but um, if you want to make yours clean, feel free to do so. And then I'm going to go ahead and do this one up in through here. Just getting it all the way to my chalk mark. And again, if some of your chalk mark shows right now, that's okay. We'll, we'll take care of that when we are filling in all the other details. Filling in the majority of this with just kind of a solid black coat, something like this. And again, when I get to the edges of the top, I'll be doing that feathery kind of brush stroke. And when I get to the edges along this bottom side, I will let my brush run out of paint and um, give myself a soft edge. I have a lot of paint on my brush right now, so I'm, since I do, I'm gonna do my feathery stuff first. <laughs> so I, I, I know that I have a good amount of paint on my brush, and if I was to try and get that soft edge right now, I might run into a little bit of difficulty. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna work with the, the quantity of paint that I have on my brush right now and just start this feathery kind of process I don't, I don't know if it's intended to look like feathers or eyelashes or just something really fun at the top of this um, mask type of makeup that is on this person. And then once I get that done, if you feel like you still have a ton of paint on your brush, I just wiped mine off on my paper towel and that'll allow me to get this nice soft edge down in through here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash and dry my brush so I can go ahead and do my red area which will be my lips. So I've got that nice and soft, making sure I've got that as much as I want. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. And I'm just doing a flat coat of red to start these lips off. So I just washed and dried my brush and I'm putting red paint on here. And similarly, how I did these soft edges along the face, I'm gonna do that same thing along the outside edge of my lips. So I'm just kind of painting the center area in through here. Oh, and I guess you could do it on the inside edges as well. When I do um, organic things like skin and people and animals and things of that nature, I don't tend to give um, really clean edges to many things. I Because in my head, everything kind of blends into one another like the skin on my hand my knuckle blends into my my you know back part of my hand on my lips the outside always blends into the inside the outside always blends into the skin on the face so as i'm doing these steps that's that's what i i it, what that's what's in my head so as i get towards this edge in through here at the bottom of my lip instead of doing this crisp clean line I can just kind of let my brush run out of paint and it allows me to get a softer edge so when I do go to do the edge of my lips and give it the detail that it deserves and that um, where it blends into the skin, I've already got that soft edge to start that process. So as I'm doing this lip in through here, if I bump into that black and overlap the black a little bit, I'm totally okay with that. And it also makes your painting process a little bit easier when you're not concerned about having those edges perfect because you don't need to, and it, it looks more natural when they're not. So I'm just kind of bringing this out to these edges, letting myself kind of run out of paint, which is allowing me to get these soft edges. And then once I've got this done, we will be utilizing our, let's, we're gonna utilize our big brush and our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, as I'm just kind of working my way towards these little edges here, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get your large brush out as well. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the next step is we're doing shadows on our face. So I'm gonna be using both my medium brush and my large brush. I'm gonna be using black, brown, and my skin color that I created. So how I'm gonna do this is I my intention is to create these shadows, but it's really 
the contours in the face that we're creating. So, and shadows, I guess. <laughs> so I'm gonna have little shadows underneath the nostrils and underneath the nose. I'm gonna have shadow underneath the bottom lip in through here. I'm gonna have faint shadows on the sides of the nose, which in essence are just gonna create that contour on the sides of the shadow, or on the sides of the nose and nearing the nostrils. And then we're gonna do a pretty dark shadow down on the bottom of the face so it looks like it's going into the shadows but we also need to give our person here some cheekbones so just know when we're doing this the the next thing that we're going to be doing is the highlights to the face and the highlights are going to make everything pop out so this step might after you're done with this step it might still look a little flat but once we put the highlights on in the next step that'll make everything pop out for you so just know that more shape is coming so this is one of those steps that less is more you don't need a lot of paint on your brush especially when you're going in for these really dark shadows underneath these um these objects that are really popping out of the face and I will be utilizing my skin color to get these shadows to blend into it. So how I'm going to do this, I'm starting with my medium brush. I'm starting with brown paint and I'm going to get my shadows underneath my nose in through here. So just brown paint is going to kind of give me this outline underneath my nose in through here and I'm running right into my um, chalk mark that will eventually just kind of disappear. I did just tap my brush in water to get this edge of my shadow where it touches the face to be a little bit on the softer side. That will help you to spread out that paint so it doesn't um, look like just a line on the, on the surface. I'm gonna put a little shadow right in this little dip between um, where I feel the, the lip would kind of stick up a little bit. And if you're unable to get your shadow to blend in with the skin, that's when you just pick up a little bit more of your skin tone. So if, I, if this area dried a little bit too fast on me, I can pick up a little bit of my skin color and just get it to blend in to that shadow a little bit. So I would just kind of keep playing with that. I'm gonna pick up just a little bit more brown because I want to add, I want, I want the shadow to go a little bit further underneath this nostril over here. So just bringing that a little bit further, maybe a little bit down into this area. I'm gonna pick up black in a second so I can have the area underneath the nostrils where the nostrils dip in the most to be the darkest, but just getting that on there for now. I'm gonna stick my brush a tiny bit, little tiny tip of black on my brush is gonna get me this really dark nostril area in through here so just a teeny tiny bit of black and just blend it into your existing shadow and if you feel like you want a little bit darker right underneath that tip feel free to just put a tiny bit underneath there and again if you do anything that is too much just know that you'll be able to back it off when we um, do the highlights or you can bring it back some of your some of your um, original skin color so I'm just putting a little bit more darkness in through this nostril and through here I'll wipe my brush off on my paper towel that's my one of my um, safety nets is my is my paper towel to make sure that I have enough paint on my brush and that I keep it in control at all times so that's looking pretty pretty good to me in through there and then I'm gonna put a tiny bit I just wipe or washed my brush I'm putting a tiny bit of brown paint on my brush my nose at the bottom of the nose will dip in a little bit so I just put a tiny bit of brown paint on my brush to get this bottom edge of the nose to be a little bit darker than what's gonna be the top of it. I'm picking up a little bit of my skin color right now to get this to blend in. So this is gonna be that little part that dips right after the button part of the nose. It dips down towards the mouth, something like this. And again, don't worry if it's not perfect at this point because you'll be able to get it to blend in with the tip of the nose when we when we go ahead and do that in a little while and if you wanted to just kind of rub it out a little bit making sure that you've got it as blended as you want into that main area 
and you can always again just kind of keep picking up that regular skin tone to get it to blend in through there and as I'm painting the skin tone when it's wet it's it's lighter than the um, than it is when it's dry so you can that was what I was um, alluding to earlier when I was talking about when you are mixing your color so that is evident right now and then once I've got my nose I think that the nose is probably the the most difficult part in getting this um, this shadowy area but again it'll look a lot more realistic when we put those highlights on there so once I've got that area in through there if I can ever stop <laughs> what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a similar thing down at the bottom of my mouth so I'm gonna put a tiny bit of brown paint on my brush to start just to kind of get this shadow party started down underneath here and I have a little bit more freedom down here because this is going to all be in the shadows in a minute but I want to get this nice dark area I just put a little bit of black paint on my brush and this is obviously a larger area than underneath the nose so I can kind of be a little bit more free free flowing when it comes to adding this on here so just kind of getting this shadow to kind of go up that lip a little bit on either side to give it a little bit more dimension and now that I've got that what I'm going to do is I'm putting my medium brush away I'm going to take out my large brush and this is where I'm going to start to add the shadows on the side of the nose maybe a little bit where those nostrils are my cheekbones and the side of my face so I wiped my brush on my I have a clean brush I'm going to start with my skin tone plus a teeny bit of brown paint so not much what I'm really just looking to do is make this area just a tiny bit darker than the rest of the skin so if you're um, if you haven't done this before and might be a little bit nervous going into the process you can always dab your brush off on your paper towel as well so this is going to come in through here so I'm just going to kind of make it I want a little bit more brown just making sure that I've got that, that little bit of a darkness. So somewhere in through here, I'm gonna bring this in through here and I want it to blend in with the face. So as I'm doing this, I just know that I'm gonna blend it out into, into the sides of the face. So I've got brown plus my skin color. I'm going to, you can also bring it around these nostrils a little bit if you want to. And then I'm just gonna get it to blend out. So I'm really not doing a whole heck of a lot. Just a teeny tiny bit is gonna help it to blend in. We will be brightening the tip of, or the bridge of the nose in a little while, as well as the little nostrils. So this again is just kind of getting the party started, giving me a little bit of shadow, uh, or contours on the sides of the nose. I can even, if I wanted to, I could bring a little bit down in through here that just makes it a little bit darker, but again, not necessary because we're gonna be, we'll be doing the um, the highlights and stuff in a minute. So this, this works out well for me in through here. Just blending my brush out just a little bit more. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start coming down in through this vicinity. So this is going to be predominantly brown plus my skin color and more brown because I want this to be darker down in through here and then when I get to the area where it meets this black area I'm going to be really really dark and I'll probably use a little bit of black as well so I didn't wash my brush I'm going to start with some brown on my brush and think of this if you've ever um, put makeup on yourself or on somebody else this is kind of to contour where the where your cheekbones are so the cheekbones for me are kind of like lined up with my nose so if these are my cheekbones in through here I would get it to be darker down in through here so I have my brown on my brush and if you go into your black don't worry about it and then I'm just going to kind of blend this into my skin tone in through here. So I've got my brown. I'm going to bring it down in through here. And then you can just start rubbing it out if you want to. I'm going to pick up a little bit more brown plus my skin tone. So this way I can get these two areas to just blend into one another in through here. Again, once we add the highlights and another layer on top of this, it will look much, much better. But this is just getting those darker areas to start to emerge. I can get put that with a little bit more black on it. I want to make sure that this 
area in through here is nice and dark as it's coming down underneath the mouth. I, I really want this to look like it is in the shadows as it's coming down towards um, this area. I'm picking up a little bit more of my skin tone in order to get these two to blend a little bit more. So I just picked up a little bit more of my skin tone. Again, using my brush to, or my paper towel to control the quantity of paint that I have on my brush. So just letting these two kind of blend into one another. And then I can just work them together along along the area where they're meeting and soften it up a bit more and then just bring this down in through here. I'm gonna get that a little bit darker in a minute but I'm gonna go ahead and do this side over here. So picking up some brown paint, knowing that this is where I want my, my kind of my cheek to be dip in the most. I want down here to be nice and dark as well. So I've got that brown on my brush. There might be a little remnants of the skin color as well. And then I'm gonna get this to maybe come in a little bit. And the further you bring the shadow in, the more those cheeks are gonna pop out. You might want your face to look a little bit more shallow and have a little bit more of a flatness to it. That's gonna be a personal preference on your part. This, this person can look whatever way you want them to look. They can look like a female, they can look like a male, they can look whatever way is appealing to you. They could look like somebody you know. Maybe you do a self-portrait. I'm picking up some of my original um, skin color to get these two sections to just kind of blend into one another. And when I'm doing this, I am consciously kind of thinking, okay, I want it to look pretty natural. I want these to look like they're blending in together. So I'm not using a ton of paint on my brush, but I am continuing to work it, especially as, as it's drying. So that way I can have a smoothness to it. Um, I am gonna put a little bit more darkness down in this bottom area, but I wanna work these edges before, uh, before they dry too much on me. I really like to, um, as paint is drying, use the a soft touch to the tip of my brush that allows me to get them to blend in really well together as they're drying i can just kind of soften it up a little bit i just washed my brush because i wanted to put some of my some of the skin color but clean um on here so i so it merges a little bit better my brush was a little overloaded with the brown so i just picked up a little bit more of my original skin color so i could get those two to work into each other a little bit better and then i'm going to put a little bit more darkness down at the bottom so i'm going to pick up i wiped my brush off i picked i'm picking up a little bit of brown plus a teeny tiny bit of black so not a lot of black, but enough where I can um, start to really get some darkness down here at the bottom. I wanna make sure that it, uh, for me, I kinda want this to almost disappear into the darkness. So I'm using my, my black and my brown to really give me this darkness down at the bottom. And again, you might find that you don't want yours to go as dark as mine. Maybe you want your head to look like the, the bottom of it is up a little bit. For me, I'm having the eyes kind of coming at us, but you can certainly bend, twist, shape yours however you'd like to. And if you had any areas along these sides that were a little unpainted, you could certainly, I just picked up a little bit more black paint to make sure that these two um, sections really um, blend in well to, with each other. So that will help me to just kind of soften that edge a little bit more. And I'll do the same thing over on this side with just a teeny tiny bit of black paint on my brush. And then twid to, uh, fiddle with it as much as you want. We are going to be doing the highlights for the next step with this large brush again. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily cast total judgment upon it yet, but you can certainly fiddle with it a little bit more. And then you can wash and dry this large brush in preparation for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the next step is we're gonna do the highlights on the skin. So I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm gonna be using are my skin tone and white. I might use a little brown here and there if I need to blend it into my shadowy areas, but for the most part, it's gonna be white plus my um, skin, skin tone. 
So the idea here is anything that you want to pop out, you're going to put a highlight on. So I'm going to have a highlight on the forehead. I'm going to have a highlight on the bridge of the nose, maybe a little bit on the nostrils. Definitely a, a big highlight in through here to get that button nose to pop out a little bit more. I'll have highlights on the cheeks. And then I'm going to have little highlights on any areas around the mouth that I feel would probably protrude a little bit. So maybe those little areas um, underneath the nose that lead to the, the bumps on the top of the lips, maybe a little highlight around the edges of the lips that'll make them look bigger and more pouty. Um, so that's how I'm gonna approach it. And I, all the while, I'm gonna want it to blend into the neighboring skin tone. So I think I'm gonna start with my cheeks to start. So I know that I want my brightest of my bright area to be the tip of the nose. So while I'm doing this, I don't want to make the whole face white. I want it to be lighter than white, but darker than my skin tone. So I'll use my skin tone plus white on my brush. You could certainly just mix yourself a lighter version of the skin tone, but I like to kind of do it on the fly and by sight. So I'm going to pick up some white and my skin tone. So this is gonna give me a lighter version and I'm gonna work on my cheeks. So when I do this, I am not concerned about hitting this. I, it's almost gonna look more natural if you do hit it a little bit. That was a lot of paint on my brush, so I just wiped it off a little bit. So I'm going to get my light areas in through here. I know that I want these cheeks to be, you know, pretty, far out or feel like they have a lot of lightness to them. So I am just kind of getting this lightness on here and then I'm gonna, we're in the main area that I want it. And then what I'll do is I'm gonna blend it out around the edges to get it to blend into the, the regular skin color. So what you don't see a lot of times to control my paint quantity, I wipe my brush off on my paper towel. I'm not working with a lot of paint on my, um, on my brush. So that way, again, I can kind of control how this blend is happening. And again, this area where it's meeting the black, I'm, I'm cool with it not being perfect because I will, um, we're gonna be doing a, a, a step that will bring those two places together. And I don't want this to go too close to the nose because I have that dip in the nose for a reason or the darker sides for a reason. So they look like they are, uh, uh, going in towards the in in a little bit in through there which makes the nose pop out a little bit more and whatever I do on the right hand side I want to just kind of make sure that I do on the left hand side I'm going to pick up some of my original skin tone now to get this to blend in a little bit around the um, from here to here so I just picked up a little bit of my original skin tone and right now I'm using this circular type of scrubbing motion for my brush stroke. You might find that a different brush stroke works for you, but this with this type of firm bristle brush really works for me. And once I've got that on there, I while I'm down here, I think I'm gonna go ahead, I've got um, a little bit of paint on my brush. I'm gonna add these little bits of highlights in through here and here. You could certainly use a smaller brush to do this, but I'm just using the remnants of that light color that I had to give myself this bit of a highlight right around the mouth. And you can see it just immediately allows that area to just kind of pop right out. And I, again, not hardly any paint on my brush. I know that it's a little bit lighter than what my natural skin tone was. So this is allowing this area to pop out. I actually left a little of this area when I was doing my, um, my darkness. So this kind of works out well. I don't have to do much in through there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and work on my nose area. So again, I have a little bit of remnants on my brush of the, of the lightness. So I can just on these nostrils, just kind of rub my brush a little bit to give myself a little bit of a light area where that part would pop out the most. But I'm kind of running out of paint at this point. So I am going to reload my brush in order to get the rest of the nose. I'm gonna start at the top of the head and work my way down towards this nose area. So I'm gonna start similarly to how I did my cheeks. And as you're watching this video, if you 
every now and again keep your eye on my paint as it's drying you're going to notice it does get darker so i may end up going back and elevating these lighter um, parts a little bit but just wanted to give you that visual <laughs> so i'm going to pick up some more white probably about equal parts white and my um my original skin color and this is going to start my my light area for my forehead so i've got this going on up in through here i know that i, I want this pretty uh evident that it is in fact lighter so i'm going to go ahead and start working this down the bridge of the nose i do have a lot of white on my brush right now so i think i'm going to stick it right here on the tip of my nose while i've while i've got it i'll take advantage of it and then i'm going to just bring it up into the the bridge of the nose so you i'm picking up more of my skin color you may want yours to be of a different shape than mine is you might want your nose to um, have a little bump on the midsection of it or just a little bump on the end of it whatever works for you is totally fine again know know that your paint will get a little bit darker as it dries so as you're going through this process you can kind of plan for that. I'm going to go up in through here, give myself this light area. I'm going to get it to blend out into my, my skin tone. I am in a second going to start crossing it over those little feathery pieces. I just picked up some of my skin tone to get these two to blend in together in through here. And I am, again, not terribly concerned about bumping into my um, these little eyelash pieces because I know I'm doing another step to them that's going to overlap them. So I did it this way because I knew that having these faint ones in, in the background would look really nice and natural. So that's why I, I started the process and I wanted a nice uneven edge to those um, to that to that black section. So that's why I did it in that manner. And then I'm just going to kind of work my way down in through here making sure that everything blends in the way that i want it to maybe a little bit more lightness on those little nostrils in through here and if you do anything and you're like oh my god that was that was too much it was too light you can always just bring back that original tan color the original skin color you can always add it with a little bit of brown whatever works for you visually is where you should take it you don't need to take it into the same exact place that i'm taking it you might find that you want you know yours to have more drama to it or for yours to look more on the unrealistic side and maybe you want yours to have more energy to it and have a have a you know a lighter skin tone or a darker skin tone whatever is visually appealing to you again is where you should take it i'm going to pick up a little bit more white paint on my brush right now so i can get a little bit more of the bridge of the nose and maybe the forehead part to to bump out a little bit more and if you wanted you could certainly if you did a dark area in through here that would make it look like it dips in a little bit more there so playing with these highlights and shadows will give you the form to the face so it's you know everything comes to life with highlights and shadows <laughs> so that's exactly what's happening here we're just bringing this to life with these um with these highlights and shadows so i'm gonna wash my brush i think i want a little bit more um of a the the skin color down at the bottom of the nose and this is the part where i just start kind of tweaking it to give myself making sure everything is as smooth as i want it and has the look that i that i am going for i'm going to put a little bit more of a bright brightness on the nose up and through this area so it gives it that volume that I, I want that I want to see from it and of course just continuing to add these layers and continuing to elevate them into a brighter area is going to make it pop out a little bit more so I just kind of keep going in a, in kind of a slow pace in order to get the um the shape that i'm looking for every light layer that i put on to this bridge of this nose makes it pop out more and more and more and if i want it to recede then i would make these areas a little bit darker so just for demonstration purposes i just put a touch of brown paint 
on my brush and if I put a little bit more darkness in through this area in through here that's going to make that the face kind of sink in a little bit more in that area and then I may wait for it to dry um, before I say that I'm done and just kind of wait to see if I want to add any more little darker areas like I felt like I wanted a little darker area in through there so I just added a touch more brown to to the equation maybe a little bit bring the nose in just a little bit more in through here and then I would definitely step away from it looking at it from the other side of the room really makes a difference and allows you to see if you you know want to add more or less I think I want to like add a little bit more lightness on the cheekbone so I would pick up a tiny bit more white and just add a little bit more highlight to the top of these cheeks that's going to make them look like they're coming at us even more so this is how I would approach creating the form of the face and you can certainly you know bend twist and shape your face into however you want it to be but again just kind of you know doing a little bit stepping back letting it dry because it will take on a, a bit of a different look as it dries and then you just kind of keep adding to it and then we will be using our small brush for the next step so once you've finalized your face and again I think I will probably sit and fiddle with mine for a couple more minutes but once you've finished yours you can put your large brush away take out your small brush say this is where I just kind of keep adding I keep adding little little brightness to the nose and you know and this is part of my process so <laughs> when you get done with your face you can um, put your large brush away take out your small brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're gonna be doing for the next step is we're painting ourselves some teeth I'm gonna be using my small brush the colors I'm using are black white brown Mm, and I might use a little yellow too. So the idea here for them to look a little more on the realistic side is you don't want to make them bright, bright white. Even though we all long for bright white teeth, we don't necessarily, it doesn't look that natural. <laughs> so I'm going to start off with like a gray type of color and I'm going to have my teeth darker as they kind of go into the shadow of the lip and then they'll be a little bit brighter on the tips. And of course I'm going for a couple of fangs on my, on my um, beautiful creature here. So I think I'm just going to start with some black brown and a little of white on my brush at the same time. This will give me different tonal values of this color I'm going for. I'm going to give myself a little bit of an outline. Oh, and you can also dip your brush in water. So that way you have a, a nice fluid fluidity to your paint as you're doing this. So I'm going to start off with my fangs. I'm going to have one over on this side. Oh, maybe a little more white so we can actually see what I'm doing here. So I'm going to have maybe one over in through here. And you can make yours as big or as small as you want. Totally up to you. I'm going to do another one maybe in through this direction. And you can see I'm not really going all, all the way up to my red of my of my lip. I'm kind of leaving it a little away. I think I'm going to have a little kind of sliver of a tooth over here and over here. I'm just giving myself a faint little outline right now. And for my teeth in through here, I'm gonna have my two front teeth and then um, the next ones to them. I'm not gonna bring them down too, too far because I want the, the fangs to kind of be the star of the tooth show here. So just kind of doing one, two. And I, I don't necessarily want them to be perfect either. These are, you know, not not perfect <laughs> you can make yours perfect if you want but I'm gonna have mine not perfect and then once I have that in there I'm not even gonna um, reload my brush I'm just taking the remnants of my brush starting at the bottom of the tooth and rubbing it up into the darkness so this is gonna give me this gray value I'm, I'm totally out of paint on my brush right now so I do have to reload a little bit so again black brown and a tiny bit of white, wipe, uh, dip my brush in water, tap it on my paper towel, 
And again, I, I'm just going for this gray type of look to start, just so I can have a real nice natural looking tooth to work with um, for my, my highlight. And every time I reload my brush, that's the same color combination. And because I didn't pre-mix a color, again, I'm gonna get this great variety of tones and shades throughout these teeth. And I'm letting it go, stay a little bit dark not a little bit, a lot of it dark as it's going up towards that um, lip. So that way it looks like there's a little bit of a shadow in through there. And then what I'm gonna do, so I've got them on here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of add some highlights. So I'm gonna start with um, some white. I did not wash my brush. I picked up some white and a little bit of water. So this is gonna be um, vibrant, but I'm still gonna have some control in it so I can get it to blend in with that um, gray that I had. I think I'm going to pick up a little bit more brown. It's turning a little bit too white on me, so I picked up white with a little bit of brown. I'm making the edges of my teeth a little, um, again, not straight. I'm leaving a little bit of space in between my teeth, and I'm just progressively kind of getting lighter and lighter on these edges, so it really just looks nice and natural to me. If I went all white right off the bat, I think, um, again, that it would have a little bit less of a natural look to it. So I'm just progressively getting it lighter and lighter at the edges. So uh, to me, that's kind of like where it would be emerging into the light, and that would make it look the, the brightest. And on the fangs, those can, of course, have a nice bright spot if if you want it to look like it's kind of on the rounder side or have some shape to it, the brightest spot would be maybe about midway down the tooth. Um, I am gonna put a little bit more of a highlight in a minute, just kind of progressively getting to my lighter colors in through here. I just picked up a little bit more white and brown to get this one to have a little bit more of a lighter area in through here, and then I will Amp, amp it up to whatever brightness that I want in a second here, maybe with a little bit of white and yellow, but this is looking pretty, pretty good so far. And now I'm gonna go in for some, I think I'm just gonna pick up white with a teeny tiny bit of yellow, just so it's um, not super white. Again, I guess I just don't want it to go overly white on me. And I'm gonna do a nice bright highlight on this tooth and maybe a little bit on those edges, maybe bring up a couple little lighter marks. And again, just trying not to make it look super consistent, really just wanna give a nice natural look to it um, and getting it to blend in with that darker stuff that I put along the edges or along the sides. So that way I've progressively made it light as it is emerging into um, view from on from inside the mouth and then once you've got this all nice and and created we are going to be using our medium brush for the next step so just getting my last little highlight on here I suppose you could have like blood dripping from your teeth too if you wanted to but I'm gonna just leave it as as is and if you want to make some additional stuff coming out of your mouth, feel free to do so. And then we're gonna be using our, um, our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got your teeth all nice and brightened up here and have as much dimension on them as you want, you can put your small brush away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our lips. So I'm gonna use my medium brush. The colors I'm using are black, brown, red, white, and maybe a little yellow too. Um, so how I'm gonna approach this is I'm gonna approach the shadowy areas first and the little creases and wrinkles throughout the lips. And then I'm gonna work my way towards the bright, wet parts of the lip, lips. So I, on these, have created some wrinkles at the bottom part of this top lip. So we're gonna be pulling up some shadowy, wrinkly areas in through here. It will always be a little bit shadowed and wrinkly as it's coming out of the mouth. So we're gonna have little, little wrinkles in through here, 
we'll have the shade of the lips kind of darker down in through here and then we'll work on some highlights and wet spots and by the time we're done there'll be these big voluptuous red Dracula lips. So I'm going to start with my medium brush and I'm going to start with black, brown, and red on my brush. And you don't need a lot. This is going to be where we're going to start to pull up these dark wrinkly areas. Black can very easily take over so you don't need a lot at all. So a little touch of black on your brush a little touch of red on your brush and a little touch of brown on your brush. So I've got a dark, rich color to use as my shadowy area. So I want this to look pretty natural, so I'm going to start by going in the center of my lips and kind of pulling it up and in a curved kind of manner, pulling it from the underside of the lip and pulling it out in a curved manner. So this is going to give me that shape of the lips being round. It's going to tell the viewer that there is some form to this. The center one can kind of almost go upwards and then as you're working your way towards the left you curve it this way and towards the right you curve it that way. And the more unpredictable and less perfect you can be, the more natural this will look. And if you bump in and get some red in your teeth, don't worry about that. You'll be able to, you can you can correct that and make little adjustments on that and I'm just going to kind of bring this over. I have not washed my brush or uh, rinsed my brush and put more paint on it as of yet, just kind of utilizing what the remnants are that I have on here, bringing it all the way down in through here, bringing some down in through here. While I still have this on my brush, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, it's got black and brown remnants on it. I'm going to pick up a little bit of red and I'm going to this will, in essence, be my next darkest color. So I'm going to kind of do the same thought process coming out of the, the top of the bottom lip, something like this. This is going to give me some darker areas. I'm going to, I'm putting a little bit more um, paint on my brush. I picked up a little bit of red because I was running out. And I'm going to bring this down in through here. So for me, as I'm doing these lips, this was going to be my darkest, darkest area. And then my next darkest area is going to be my wrinkles down on my bottom lip in through here. And then we'll progressively get lighter and lighter. And I'm just thinking I'm reloading with a little bit more red. As I'm doing this, I'm just thinking, okay, the wrinkles in the lips are going to be darker. So let's put those on and bring them in a natural kind of form formula and and way about them with these curved lines i am going to put some darker red down in through here so just using the remnants of the black and the brown plus a little bit more red to give me some darker values down here at the bottom part of the lip in through here maybe pulling some of these um, marks up towards the the top marks because i know that we've all got lots of little lumps and bumps in our lips and there's little divots and dark marks and light marks and all kinds of stuff. So in order to accomplish that, I've got to have all these different kind of tonal values in, in through here with, with the shape and movement. So maybe I've got some little speckles in through here, something like that. And then up in the top, I think I might have a little dark area in through here. And again, I still haven't put more black and brown on my brush. I just keep adding red to my brush. So this is, again, progressively getting it a little bit lighter, um, but not going all the way red on me. And maybe I'll have a little bit of darker red in through here. I am at this point because I am i don't see it's turning much darker than my original red. I just picked up a touch more brown. So I've got a little bit of brown and red down in through this corner because I feel like it would get a little bit darker down in these um, bottom corners of the mouth. So if you feel like it's not going dark enough on you, you can certainly pick up a little bit more of the black and the brown with the red, but the red is gonna be your dominant color. But the um, when you make the little darker areas, that's going to give you that dimensional element to, to the lips. Um, I do want to make sure that I've got all of this painted in through here. I don't want any unpainted areas. All right, so that's looking pretty good to me. I think I've got enough darkness where I want. So now what I'm going to do 
is I am going to start my lighter areas. So I've already kind of give myself a footprint. I have light areas in through here. I'm going to have some light areas up at the top, but I want like a medium tone. So I already have red on there. So I want to get it a little bit lighter. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to make myself a little lighter version than red. So in order to do that and for it to not go pink on me, pink would be okay. And if you want to put pink as your lighter version, you can certainly just go red with a little tiny bit of white paint and that's going to give you a lighter version of red but if it goes too pink on you depending on the type of the, the type of red that you're using or if you just don't want it to go pink you can add a touch of yellow and what that's going to do is it'll keep it more on the redder side and just make it a lighter red as opposed to a pink type of tone and I don't want it to go too too light but I do want it to be lighter than that red and once I've got my desired shade this is looking pretty good to me I'm going to start adding these little flecks of highlights so I know that I want to have some up in through here and I, I'm not going to ever do a solid color I'm never going to just kind of paint 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 it away I'm really just going to be adding these little mark making um, marks <laughs> in order to sell the story of this lip having texture and dimension to it. I can go into my dark areas if I want to and add little pieces in through, you know, here and there, but I'm for the most part going to stay in my highlighted areas. So I'm going to have little bits down in through here. So I, I'm just using that lighter red version right now, giving myself these little bits of um, brightness throughout this poofy bottom lip that that I that I've got going on in through here bringing a little bit up in through here starting to turn my my um, direction to right curves as opposed to left curves which would they were on the left hand side and again I'm just kind of doing little dots and stuff little dots and and dashes to create these these bits of highlights um, I'm putting some up on this top area in through here, making that a little bit fuller. You could even put, you know, little little bits over on the edges if you want to, wherever you feel that it would it would behoove you to put those lighter notes, feel free to do so. And then once you've got the lightness in there, now we start adding that real powerful um, like wet look to it. I think I'm actually going to put a little bit more darkness down at the bottom first before we add the wet look. So I'm going back in. I want to make this time, this bottom part a little bit darker so it feels like it's underneath um, the lip. So I just am reloading with a little bit of black, red, and brown just to give myself a tiny bit more shadow at the bottom of this lip. So again, these are those kind of things that sometimes you just got to do on the fly, even though I thought that I had it done as I'm as I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh, I think I want that a little bit darker. So as I'm doing this, before I put those um, vibrant wet marks, just making sure that I've got the darkness the way that I want it at the bottom of the lip. And this is looking much better to me, leaving a little bit of lightness at the edge of that lip, but enough to give me this this dip at the bottom. And now I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm going in for those really wet kind of marks, which would be predominantly white, but they don't just have to be white. So I'm gonna use white to, to start these wet kind of marks. I'm gonna have, and they're not necessarily wet, they could just be shiny marks. I'm gonna have a whole bunch right up here at this tippy top where it is um, you know, get it, ca getting some kind of brilliant light from somewhere. I'm going to do it really heavy kind of in that mid section and then I will let it kind of trail off into the, the side portions of the lips. And I'm just doing little polka dots. I'm going to pick up some of that, um, mid, that um, lighter red color that we had plus the white on my brush to get this to kind of trail off. And um, so it's not just white and then red. And then this way that will help to sell the story of it's, you know, getting shiniest in through there. And then maybe a couple of little dots going over here. And if I felt that I needed to get those edges 
any cleaner where they're meeting the face, you can certainly work on, on that as well. And then I'm going to go ahead and put some of this lighter color down in the bottom lip. So white paint is where I just put on my, on my brush. I'm going to have this lightest area right about in through here. So as I do this, I'm looking for my light spots. I, I want to avoid making too, I don't want to get rid of all my dark spots, so I'm going to enhance some of my lighter spots. And I'm doing this in a, they're going to have kind of arced lines to them to tell the story of the direction of the, the shape of this object that they are um, making shiny, but they're also going to be kind of chaotic too. So I'm just using little wiggle marks. They're gonna get smaller and smaller as they go towards the edge of the lip. So something like this. Some of them are gonna be longer than others. Some of them are gonna have more um, thicker paint so they'll look lighter than others. And, and I'll go curved on this side and then as I go towards the right hand side, I will curve them in the other direction. And again, the trick is to not be super systematic with them. So if you can kind of not um, go, you know, exactly one line to the next, make one longer, one shorter, one has more curve to it, one had maybe one comes up higher, maybe one. I put a little bit more of that pink on my brush, so maybe it's more pink as opposed to white. That's going to make it look more realistic. And then I would just kind of keep fiddling with this. I would probably stand back from it, make sure that I've got enough of the brightness on it, amp up maybe even you know a couple of the areas in in the middle of it. And then when you're all set, we're going to be utilizing our small brush for the next step. So you can just get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are finishing our eyes. We'll be doing all the decorative stuff around the eyes in, a, in the next step, but for right now, we're gonna just concentrate on the, on the centers of the eyes. So I'm gonna use my small brush. I'm gonna be using black, white, yellow, red, my skin color, and maybe some brown. <laughs> So probably everything that's on my palette. <laughs> but I'll talk you through it and um, just enjoy the experience. You can have your eyes whatever color you want. You can have green eyes or blue eyes, whatever you'd like to. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm going to be putting the colored part of the eye in the bottom of these black sections in through here. Then I'm gonna be coloring the whites of the eyes, which will make them like dark-ish. Um, and then we'll come back and put some details on the pupil of the eye and we'll put some stuff around the eye and by the time we're done they'll be beautiful mysterious eyes. So how I'm going to start this is I'm going to start with red and yellow on my brush at the same time. This is going to start my process of my colored part. I'm going to start at the bottom of my eye in through here and I'm going to pull it up. I'm not painting the center where the pupil is, and I'm gonna leave the edges dark. So that way they end up really kind of just looking as if it's in the dark. I think I'm gonna pick up a little bit more red on my brush just so I can almost get it like an orangey type of a um, color. And I'm gonna get it to fade up and like disappear up in the corners of the eye. So that way it looks like the head is kind of down and looking at us a little bit and we're seeing the colored part at the bottom of the eye. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other eye. So red and yellow on my brush. I'm gonna concentrate on getting, getting the um, colored part predominantly to show up down at the bottom portion and then just get it to fade up and kind of disappear up on that left and right hand side of the eye. And this is again one of those steps that as the paint is drying, if it dries too dark for you, then you just can come back and add a little bit of lightness in that center part. I'm going to put a tiny bit of white paint on my brush just to show you what I'm talking about. I didn't wash my brush. If it dries too dark, you just kind of put a little bit of white in that area just to kind of lighten up that bottom little section of the eye. That's going to make it look like it's really kind of catching the glow of something. Add a tiny bit of white 
onto my brush, get this to blend out a little bit. And again, just that, that little center area works the best. And I'm just gonna make sure that I, I just kind of keep elevating these colors on the side so they, so they don't disappear 100% working on a, back, a black background like this. The colors will go real dark as they dry. So I just kind of keep working it. And if you end up with little speckles of different colors, that's fantastic too. That'll make it look even more natural. And once you've got it in the way that you want, what I'm gonna do is I'm washing and drying my brush. And I'm gonna go in for the whites of the eyes. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna have them really dark up at the top and in through here so they look like they're in the shadows. And then they'll be the lightest down near the bottom, but I'll have a little bit darkness in the corners of the eyes as well. So I'm gonna start with black and brown on my brush. I'm gonna wipe it off on my paper towel just so I don't have too much on there. And I'm going to put this darkness up at the top of the eye, the white part of the eye up and through here. I'm gonna do the same thing for this one. I'm running out of paint, so I'm reloading with black and brown. And I don't want it to be all 100% black. That's why I'm utilizing the brown on my brush as well. So it's going pretty darn dark up and through here. And then as I come down towards this corner of the eye, and you can see my, my chalk is magically disappearing as we're doing this, I'm gonna start to pick up white in a second here once I get this to blend in a little bit. I'm picking up white paint now on my dirty brush. Not much, just a little bit, so I can get the whites of the eyes to start to emerge in through here. And then I'm just gonna get it to blend up into that that gray area. And again, this is one of those steps, you know, you might have to do a couple of different um, passes in order to get it as light as you want, but if you can get that bottom region to be the lightest, that would make it look the most natural. I'm gonna add a touch more white onto my brush so I can get just a little bit, maybe a little bit more in through here and down in through here. And I'm gonna darken maybe that corner of the eye too so it looks a little bit more natural. So I just keep kind of elevating this white part so it does look like we like it's catching some sort of light, light from a light source and so it accentuates the shadow at the top of the, um, of the eye so we can make sure that it's got a lot of good dimension to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing to the other, the other eye. So I'm gonna put some black and brown on my brush at the same time. I'm gonna start up at the top of these little white sections in through here, rubbing this black and brown down so it will kind of blend into the skin tone that we have on there, reloading my brush with a little bit of black and brown. And this is one, if you go too much and it turns too dark on you, just let it dry for a minute and bring back your skin tone and just start from scratch. So you don't have to fear making a mistake because you can always just kind of reverse it by letting it dry and coming back and putting um, that skin tone back on and just trying it again. This is, you know, if you haven't done something like this before, it's sometimes it's trial and, and error. So I just picked up some white paint without washing my brush, and this is gonna give me those light sections at the bottom of the eye. I'm gonna get it to blend up into that shadowy area and bringing it down towards my, um, towards the bottom part of my eye. I'll get that bottom part of the eye to look a little bit more natural in a minute here, but just kind of setting this in, in motion here. And the edges of your eye as well, where you have that black around there, you're gonna wanna try and make sure that that's kind of clean at this point. So I'm just putting a touch of black plus water on my brush to clean up that black edge of my, of my eye, because I know that when I did it initially, it was a little, um, a little rough around the edges it's looking like, so I'm just kind of making sure that I clean up that edge to, to have it look really nice and crisp along those edges. And the top really doesn't matter as much, but maybe down at the bottom where it's meeting the white of the eye, that would make sense if it was nice and, and crisp down in through there. And then once you've got that done, what I'm gonna do next, I'm going to 
finish the 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 eye part. We'll put the exterior stuff and the little skin in a second. So I'm washing and drying my brush. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to add what I call like the haze or the glaze on top of the eye, on, on top of the, I think it's the iris, that makes it um, round. So I'm going to be putting black and white and water. So I want a really thinned out layer of gray paint in essence and has a lot of water in it. So when I go to do this, I'm in essence just kind of putting a haze over it. So I'm going to start somewhere in this vicinity. And as I do this, I'm going right on top of the pupil and I'm just bringing this hazy um, color, kind of just gray, down over the eye itself and just getting it to blend in. So this is going to add that realistic kind of um, look on top of the eye. I just added a bit more white because it's not showing up as much as I wanted it to. So I'm adding a bit more white to the equation. And I just kind of keep adding a bit of water to my brush just to make sure that I can get this to blend out and make it so you can actually see it, but it isn't um, much of a solid color. And then once I've got this eye, I will go ahead and do the next eye. So that's looking pretty good to me. It's blended out pretty well. So I'll go ahead and do this eye over here. So again, white, black, and water is what's on my brush. And I'm gonna do it in the same kind of arcing motion. So I'm gonna start about mid eye and giving it this arcing motion over in through here, a little bit maybe lighter on the top, and then it just kind of fades out and disappears in front of that, um, in front of the pupil. So something like this. I'm gonna add a tiny bit more white to my brush, similarly to how I did on the other eye because I feel like I want it to be a little bit more dominant. It's better for me to start um, in a slow fashion and keep adding on top, I'd rather do it that way than to overdo it um, initially and not be able to back it off. So I just do it a little bit at a time, and if I need to add more, I do. And if I, you know, if I need to back off, I, I'm safe because I, I didn't have much on my brush to start with. And then I just kind of lightly rub it out until it is blended as much as I want it to. And then what I'm going to do is while this is kind of just drying a little bit. We'll put a pupil on in a minute, but I want to kind of get the exterior parts of the eyes tackled. So I'm just going to put little, um, the essence of skin around the eyes, but I want the, where the eye, where the white part meets the skin part to look pretty natural. So I'm going to be using black and my, um, and my skin color on my brush and give it kind of just wispy type of, um, brush strokes. So I've got white and my skin color on here. So I'm just going to kind of give myself as if this is the bottom part of the eye in through here. Maybe bring this out into the corner of the eye. And you can certainly have yours more dramatic than mine. I'm, I think I'm going to add a little bit more darkness into the corner of that eye in through there. But this just allows me to see maybe the eyelid, maybe, you know, give myself a little bit of shape for, you know, in the in implication of eyelashes perhaps, or an eyelid of sorts. So you don't really have to do much, but just giving that, um, that information, I'm gonna put some black paint on my brush so I can um, deepen this little corner of the eye in through here. And maybe a little bit of my skin color, just to kind of make this into a natural corner in through here, so it's not, um, just the outline of the eye that we had with black. So something like that works. Maybe a little bit more skin in through here. Just giving that little corner. I want to make sure that I've got this back area in through here. Nice and natural looking as well too. So I just added a touch more black to my brush just to make sure that everything kind of talks well together. You don't um, necessarily have to have everything perfect but you definitely want them to look like they you know kind of make sense together so I just made sure I cleaned up that edge in through there I'll do the same thing over here so black 
and my skin color is what I'm going to use to um, give myself some information around the eyes. So maybe we'll give ourselves some, you know, skin underneath here. I think I need a little bit more black in through here. That looked to be a little bit too too disconnected from the black part of the eye. So I just want to kind of connect that a little bit. Yeah, that looks better to me. Something like that. That's looking good. Just making sure I do the same thing over on the other eye. So they look pretty similar. There we go. And then I'm going to add little bits of the corner of the eye in through here and then do something similar to what I did on the other eye. Just give myself the information of maybe uh, eyelid, maybe, you know, where those eyelashes are going to start. I think I want a little bit more, pull, pull this eye down just a little bit in through here. Yeah, that works. And then just kind of clean up my edges wherever I see fit. I'm going to put the twinkle in the eye in a second here. Just want to make sure that I've got all of these little bits of information as much as I want them to be. And then just kind of cleaning up my edges like I did on the on the other eye and you know again sometimes more information is good but sometimes less is it, it works just the same i want to give this kind of a dark scent a dark little corner like i did the other eye so just kind of bringing a little bit of darkness in through here i might put a little little piece of skin in that corner too and you know you can always use yourself as reference you know go look in the mirror and see what your eyes are doing that will help you to you know bring these into a, a nice realistic way this is not a person that is intended to look like somebody I know you just kind of feel feel the you know the information and kind of if you want a little piece of skin in the corner of the eye put a piece of skin in the corner of the eye i'm going to wash and dry my brush i'm going to put a little twinkle in the eye so just a little bit of white i'm going to put this somewhere up in this vicinity and just a little kind of oval type of shape i'll do the same thing in this eye and then you just sit and fiddle and do any other little adjustments that you want we're going to be utilizing our medium brush for the next step so once you've got these beautiful captivating eyes on here you can uh, put this medium brush away take out your small brush i mean uh, put your small brush away take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step all right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to put the decorations around the eyes. So I'm going to be using my medium brush. I'm going to be using black and my skin color, so black and tan. So you really can make this into whatever you want. You can make it like there's tattoos on her face. You could make it like she's got purple eyelashes. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. I'm going to go with a mysterious kind of muted feathered type of look above her eyes and then or he i can't like it looks kind of feminine -y to me um and then like almost polka dot drippy kind of marks down below so i'm gonna start up at the top i'm gonna start with black paint on my brush to kind of accentuate some of these additional pieces that um, are going to be on top of the skin. I know that we initially had some black, but I'm going to extend them even, extend some of them even further. So this is going to give me more motion and movement within that same area. So just a little bit of black paint. And when I do this, I'm flicking and I'm lifting off with my pressure. So this way I've got these beautiful, like wispy type of um, tips to to the brush stroke and you don't all have to do them in one the in the same direction i'm doing them you know to the left and to the right and just trying to make it look really kind of natural and beautiful so i did that now what i'm going to do is i'm going to pick up some black and my skin color so black plus my skin color is on my brush and this is going to give me dimension to this feathery uh, appearance that I'm going for. So you can certainly make yours as light or as dark as you want. Just let your let your hand do what it wants to do. I've got mine kind of go emerging from in through here to make it look like 
It's either really long eyelashes or some kind of cool mask that she's wearing. So feel free to, you know, make yours as dimensional as you want, but you don't need to do much. So I just kind of keep reloading my brush with those two colors. And this is looking pretty good on this side for me. So I'm going to go ahead and, and turn to this side. So again, just black with my skin color is where I'm headed here. And you can have some really light pieces by using more of the skin color. You can have some really dark pieces by using more black. So just again, overlap these, make them look at whatever way that you want them to. Ooh, I like these ones coming down here. Maybe I'll put a couple coming down in this direction. Oh yeah, just little ones all along the edges coming in all different directions. And then again, if you do something and you're like, mm, I'm not totally sure about that, just put black back on top of it. <laughs> the black will help you to cover up whatever you didn't want. So I'm just going to continue. So this that's a great exploration kind of um, thing. Just have fun with it because you've got the ability to utilize that black to erase something, especially in this midsection area. And that's looking pretty good to me. So now what I'm going to do with the black and the um, tan on my brush is I'm going to get a series of polka dots going throughout this area in through here. I'm going to cross over my face and my um, my cheek or the part above the or below the eye and this is going to give me a kind of a transition from one area to the next with these with these polka dot type of um, decorations that I'm putting on and you can of course make yours into whatever you want. This is just something that's intended to be um, fun and lighthearted and have some good dimension to it. So again, I'm just putting this skin color, um, some of the skin color plus black within um, my black section. So it looks like they're um, they're intermingling with each other or they're morphing from one from one section to the next. You could certainly utilize your small paintbrush too to get a more dynamic and kind of clean look to these dots. That's going to be totally up to you however you want to um, work with that. Right now I'm just going to start picking up black paint as I move into the the um, the cheek areas, I think I'm going to want them to be a little bit more cleaner and um, more defined. So I'm using black and I'm using really the tip tip, uh, the tippy tip tip of my brush. Uh, and of course, you can make yours as big or as small as you want. You can have them. I'm going to have some kind of coming down pretty darn far. You can have in them forming the shape of a butterfly if you want to. You can really have some super cool design work to this. This is up to you and your creative imagination to make it into whatever you want. You you know, maybe you bring them all the way down the face. Maybe you have them really concentrated up where they're meeting this mask part and then as they work down their face they get, you know, lesser and lesser, which is kind of what I'm going for, but you again don't feel that you have to do exactly as I'm doing. Just make it into your own rendition or if mine is speaking to you then feel free to do every dot exactly as I'm doing that's going to be your own personal preference oh she's looking fancy I really like doing this part <laughs> this is one of those those final steps that are like yeah this is what I'm talking about this is bringing the whole the whole concept together and it's really it's making me happy. So I'm just going to keep making dots now. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead on the other side and the other side doesn't have to be exactly as this side. So I'm going to just kind of let my, let my brush and my painterly eye do whatever it wants to do. I'm really trying to get this area where they're meeting one another to look nice and natural. Like it's morphing down into these dots that are just falling down the face or dripping or whatever you want to uh, imagine them to be that's going to be whatever is whatever your imagination is telling you they are that's what they are <laughs> and then I'm going to go ahead and kind of put a couple over in through here I think I want quite a few coming down here and you know this is that's that step one of that you're 
you might just really enjoy this and just want to go one little tiny dot at a time. You might want to really just go carefree and start adding a thousand little dots. So wherever, wherever you want to take it, this is the creative process. Do whatever is, you know, visually appealing to you. And I'm thinking that this is, this is pretty, pretty good to my eye. I'm going to add a couple more of my lighter skin dots in this um, area up and through here just so they look like they're merging together a little bit better and then once you've got as many of these decorations done as you want to on your painting we do have one tiny little step left to go and it's going to be with the small brush so once you've got this done you can put this medium brush away take out your small brush oh, this is this is exciting me. <laughs> Take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I'm going to use my small brush. I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm going to go bottom left on this one. I'm signing it with red paint. So I'm going to do my initials. You could certainly do your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you want for your identifying mark to be is totally fine. And that is going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a beautiful being here. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.